All right. Good day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Live the Fuel show. So this evening, as I'm recording this, I can say that because it's evening in the East Coast time, I'm actually going to be talking to a new guest co-host from the West Coast today. And before I give you the quick, uh, the quick intro on her, she is an author. She's also a doctor. But before I get into that, obviously, you're going to get a little hint. We talk about fueling your health, business, and lifestyle. So today, we're probably going to get on the more healthy lifestyle side of things. Uh, but obviously, most health professionals are entrepreneurs. So that might you know, slide in a little bit here. But let's give you a quick background on her, okay? She lives and breathes everything holistic health and loves teaching, writing, and speaking. And she's the author of Wave Goodbye to Type 2 Diabetes, 16 Holistic Lifestyle Practices to Prevent and Reverse Diabetes and Reclaim Joy, Vitality, and Plenty. And here's the best part, guys. If you've never heard of this doctor, Google it. I'll be doing some screen sharing on the show. She's endorsed by Dr. Christiane Northrup, who's a multi-author. And so with a healthy psychology focus, which you know I geek out about psychology, her goal is to help women understand the mindset and practices needed to prevent and reverse type 2 diabetes and access their deep well of energy. And let's be real, guys, whether it's ladies or men, we can all benefit from that. So, you know, I, I care a lot about diabetes. You know, I care a lot about psychology. My pops has type 2 diabetes. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Dr. Nikki Steinberger. Thank you so much, Scott. What an honor and a pleasure to be here with you. That was a really sweet uh, introduction. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. So sharing is caring. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Sharing. Let me, I'm just going to jump right in because sometimes I wait a little while on the show, but I got to throw this up. So how did you land Dr. Northrup? Because when I looked at your bio, I didn't even realize that's who you were talking about. And then I Googled her. I'm like, wait a minute, I've heard of this woman. So, <laughs> so how did you get her to endorse your book? Yeah, it's funny. I've been waiting for somebody uh, on a podcast or interview to ask me that <laughs> because I've wanted to say I asked her. You know, we, we so often forget that we can ask for what we need. And I literally put a little mini project together to, um, you know, see what kind of endorsements I could get and sure. picked a couple of handfuls of people. She was my top number one and um, contacted her and her team and you know, wrote a beautiful letter and, and, and asked and got this email back, the kind that you know, kind of blows your mind, uh, that <laughs> says, you know, you know, yeah, she'd love to read your book, send it over, sent her a, a paperback across coasts, um, you know, had a couple people helping me do it, put a little branch in there from a eucalyptus tree, made it okay. really like down to earth and got an email back saying, you know, she would love to endorse you and here's the endorsement and here's how you can use it. Well, and you know, she's doing well if she's picked up by Hay House because I'm actually trying to finish my first book right now and I keep hearing Hay House, Hay House, Hay House. So apparently in the health space, it's good to get picked up by Hay House. I don't, I don't know. Oh okay. yeah. I mean, she's, she's been a long time mentor. She's just, you know, um, the queen of women's health for a long time. And it was, uh, uh, humbling, uh, and heartfelt, you know, experience and honor to receive the endorsement. Well, I, I, what I love right off the bat is before we obviously dig deeper into the show, you just dropped a huge hint bomb on, it doesn't matter if it's health related or business or entrepreneurship related or author related. You just brought up the power of asking. So many people are afraid to just like, okay, the, the power of yes versus no. If you never asked, you never know if it was a yes or a no, right? Absolutely. I mean, why not ask, you know, and why not step into our value and our empowerment and ask. And, you know, inevitably there's people on the other side, you know, that will take a moment out of their rich lives and their busy lives and their important lives because people who want to help and, you know, women, let's say, who want to empower other women or, you know, health practitioners supporting other practitioners will take a moment out and uh, put in a little bit of time and energy to support you. Ask. Well, and what I love is you took it a step further. And this is just, I, I got to throw a little business in. I can't help it. That's just who I am. Um, you, you, you took it and you personalized it. Oh my God. Uh, years in sales and marketing, uh, you know, before I got into firefighting and after I got into firefighting, I don't know if you know the whole backstory, but the point is, is that it's the same thing. Okay. So many people either are afraid to ask or they give up too soon and they stop asking. 
like sales 101 is people like the average salesperson, especially a rookie, will stop asking in the first three to four. You know, they'll, they'll like email you, they'll text you, they'll call you. Well, nowadays they'll text you. I mean, historically, no one would text you to, to sell you on something. But hey, nowadays, <laughs> anything is possible. But right, like, and then, and then they give up. When it's like you just haven't built a relationship yet. So you threw that little right. eucalyptus. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And follow up and follow through, I find, mm -hmm. are so important. Most podcast interviews that I get are not on the first ask. Mm -hmm. I have it in my calendar. Let me follow up a week later. Let me follow up two weeks later. Which you did with me. Yeah. And the team. highest percentage come back after the follow up. Well, because honest, honestly, like I've, uh, I say I took July 4th week off. Um, I, I've been busy. I, I obviously working on a book, running a podcast, running my businesses, you know, and then I finally, you know, work with, I have VAs. So I have a VA team monitoring the podcast at livethefuel.com address. That I now give out to people about podcast. I needed to start breaking up my life. So I don't always heavily monitor that inbox because I have somebody monitoring that for me now. Uh, but I still, now there's, I don't know if you know about this. There's like agencies now, like there's like people getting people on podcasts. So now I've got three or four different agencies sending me people all the time too. So now you build out the list. So obviously you're a little hint. If somebody follows up sooner, yeah, you'll probably bring it up, up the radar a little bit more. It's like, Oh, sorry, we skipped over you or we didn't skip over you. We just haven't gotten to you yet. So let's move that one up. Yeah. And it shows the person really wants it, you know, and they're willing to persevere and they're committed, you know, which right away is going to push you closer to the top of the list than people who don't show that commitment. I like the word commitment, yes, because I was going to say seriousness, but it's, it's like when I, I've spent years doing health coaching from a fitness side, uh, not at your level. And <laughs> I actually nowadays don't hardly ever coach anybody on that side anymore. I mean, I'm a huge health and fitness nut. I do have a lot of experience. The podcast has actually grown my experience because I have a lot of ketogenic, uh, I'm, a, I'm a ketogenic athlete now. I'm going to be doing a 100-mile mountain biking race next weekend. Oh, my God. On olive oil and macadamia nut butter. Oh, wow. And, salt, and, and natural salt electrolytes, and that's it. Like, I'm, this is my true test. <laughs> yeah, I can see so, that. But it's taken me a couple years. I don't coach people on that. And people yeah. still reach out to me to do, like, weight loss or, you know, whatever, lifestyle choices. I'm like, guys, like, if I'm going to work with you, dude, I'm not going to say yes on the first one. Like, you got to show me your commitment because you're going to be a pain in my ass, honestly. Mm -hmm. So if you want me to professionally help you, you have to understand that I'm going to be a pain in your ass <laughs> and then we're going to grow together. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And if we can agree on that, then, you know, let's consider working together, you know? Well, have you ever had to fire a client? I love asking that question. You know, Eventually, sometimes no. I think or that help them, that help them move on to the next, yes. the next influencer. Let's go with that. Yes. More energy I've, flow. I've helped people move on. And I think that, you know, mindset, as we know, is so powerful that the person, you know, ends up just kind of slipping away at the right time. And it's like, thank you, goddess. Thank you, universe, you know? Well, and honestly, because they are binding up I love talking about energy nowadays too, because I never was geeking out about it. And then like years ago, you'll love this. I'm sure you know what the secret, right? So I watched yeah. the book, I watched the movie. Then I finally read the book. And now I regularly go back and listen to the audiobook just to, just to find the quirky spots, but then find some real, because as you grow in, in the experience, things start opening up differently years later. So that's just one example. But anyway, I've had people on that are energy experts and flow, flow state people. And you under, obviously understand that. You have a woman who talks about you know, female energy who endorsed your book. Who's, <laughs> so you, grow, you ladies clearly understand the importance of energy and flow. But it's like if you're working with people or stuck, stuck with somebody in your life that's holding you back and holding back that, the ability to emerge with that energy flow, male or female, doesn't matter, uh, that's a sign that you might want to find a way to remove that I, I'll call it a human dam. <laughs> it's like, they're just damning you up. What, what are your thoughts on that? You know, it reminds me of something that I was just going through because I had a client that in a certain way, I felt like she wasn't showing up to a certain extent. And <clears throat> I went on my morning walk and instead of doing, you know, any kind of blame or judgment, I just said to myself, okay, where am I not showing up for myself in mm. my life? Where am I not showing up? You know, because um, my thoughts, my beliefs, um, you know, affect what goes out and the people in my circle, my clients, my peers, you know, friends, family, et cetera. 
And I found a couple of places, you know, wow, that area, I could show up a little bit better there. Wow, hmm. I slipped there. I, I didn't send the email to my list like I wanted to. Um, you know, my, my walking's been great. This has been great. But meditation has been slipping a little bit. So rather than focus on what someone else is doing or not doing, let me show up, you know, more for my life. And one of the first things I did is just affirm I show up for my life. Oh, so actually giving yourself a little bit of credit. Like I think some of us who have done some of the self-focused, self-development work maybe forget that we actually have put more focus on that and we forget to reward ourselves for that? Well, credit, but I think more so in my case, it was like doing the work. It was okay. like doing the practice of affirming I show up in my life, you know, mm -hmm. and putting the message out, I'm going to focus on me and what I'm doing rather than what somebody else is doing or not. And it just, it always works when, when we look, take a look at our own mindset. Well, let, let me share a quick little segment on there. I've, I've mentioned on other shows. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like bond with you. So <laughs> um, I got married in March, St. Patrick's Day. I said I would never get married, you know, never say yeah. never in life. I'm, I'm 41 now. Uh, she's five years younger, uh, but she broke up with me after a year of, of dating. And I, I, I'm Mr. Personal Development Nut, Professional Development Nut, all this. And then I decided to say, wait a minute, you know, this, everything happens for a reason. Historically, I've just moved on. I spent years being a bachelor, especially when I was firefighting out West and everything else. Uh, by the way, real quick, I don't know if you knew that I was a wildland firefighter with the federal government out West. So that's why I mentioned earlier in the show. So oh, wow. it was just a really hard lifestyle. So I just never embraced that stuff. I didn't want to be distracted. So I, I use that as an excuse, by the way. <laughs> if anything, it just makes you really rusty and does not help you connect properly with people. <laughs> uh, but that fast forward, when she ended that relationship, you know, you always go through the breakup period. But then I said, wait a minute, was I showing up for her? Was I showing up for myself? Did I even give her and I a chance? And like, for some reason that clicked. And I said, wait a minute, I spent all this time doing personal professional development. Let's take, let's pause all that. Let's take all that flow. And let's, fix, let's dig into this. Let's see if there's something I'm missing. So I did that. And it, for the next three months while we were broken up, I mean, oh God, I was downloading books, uh, videos. Uh, I was talking to some professional peeps, you know, a little psychological, because I, I minored in psychology, so I geek out about psychology. So like, I'm like, wait a minute, I, I know I got to feel, figure this out. Come on. Um, so I wanted to share that because obviously I eventually won her back. Uh, but she admitted, she's like, you, ha you are changing. You haven't changed completely. Yeah. She's like, it's only been three months. Come on. Right. But she's like, you're showing the behaviors that are necessary to consider this. So she obviously gave me a second shot, won her back, but we made one clear distinction. She's like, that first year, it's gone. She's like, there's no reopening the door. She's like, we're starting anew because that, that was hell on earth. <laughs> So I want to share that with you because thank you. Yeah. I mean, and that's a testimony to the power of this practice, okay. you know, the practice of going within, looking at your own thoughts and beliefs and, you know, rather than doing a, a, a blame shame thing, which never gets us anywhere. So congratulations. Uh, I mean, clearly it worked. I mean, but yeah, but yeah I mean, I, and I, don't get me wrong. I still get frustrated. She still annoys me. Uh, I was listening well, to a podcast this week, driving back from New York and it was saying how, oh no, it wasn't a podcast. It was, you ever hear the book, The Superior Man? No. So it's, it's, it's a self-development book, but I think it's based on a lot of psychology, but a emotion, uh, emotional and relationship uh, guru guy. But it's about teaching men to come into their true strength, and, but also really understanding the woman. So even though it's a guy doing it, like he did a lot of research into probably with professionals like you. But the whole point is he's like, he's like listen, sometimes the woman who annoys you the most on a daily basis is the one you actually have the most sexual attraction to in those off random periods. And I was like, huh, I forgot about that part of the book because I've listened to the book three times. That was one of the books I was listening to when we were broken up. So because we had a little bit of a fight before I left for the trip, I was like, you know what? Hold on, Scott, let's go back in. Let's, 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 let's bring up some of the old books. Let's listen to it while you're traveling. Let's see if you're missing something. So I still, I still dabble. Um, yeah, and that, and that reminds me, I've followed Marianne Williamson for many, many years, and she says, you know, di like diamonds, we rub up against our rough edges to smooth ourselves out, and ooh. that's just part of the process. Yeah, but, most, right. but how, how many people, and we, we're going to tie this, ladies and gentlemen, to diabetes, <laughs> I guarantee you, but you got to get her backstory. How yeah. many of us 
we already, we already hinted at don't ask enough, don't follow up enough, and then aren't willing to rub the rough edges. There, people have gotten, um, especially the modern age, I don't want to say people, just say us in general. There's so much tech nowadays that we want everything now, right? So it's like if something gets hard or complicated, we just uncheck or check out or you know whatever, right? So that's what I'm getting for you right now. At least that's how it's clicking in my head is that, okay, guys, be willing to rub the rough edges because it, it can and will smooth out if, if both people are putting in the effort. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it's like the way out is the way through. And when fear comes up, as it will, we need to move into it, you know, at a pace that's somewhat comfortable, but also kind of stretching, you know, beyond our comfort zones. And that's how we grow. All right. So let's, let's tie it in. Okay. We're going to, that's right. People uh, actually, when I used to fight fire, if there's two different fire crews, uh, we were digging hand lines. We had to get to a point where we could tie it in. Right. So we're on two different paths, but we have the same goal. We're going to, we're going to merge this fire break and then tie in the lines. So we're going to tie this in diabetes, right? Wave goodbye to type two diabetes. You published it this year. When, what month was that? January. January. Great way to start the year off. Hustle. Yeah. So does it, is this all come up in some of the deeper parts of the book? Uh, because I'll, I'll relate this to my own father. He's been a type two diabetic going on almost 10 years. He never was. I already know from all the people that I've interviewed and my own knowledge that it was a lifestyle triggered event. Um, you, you may agree to disagree, but that's why you're on. That's why we're going to talk about this. But you know, people don't ask they, or they're afraid to ask. Interesting point. You brought up fear. And then next thing you know, your lifestyle choices are compounding, 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 and now you're where you're at, type two diabetic, yada, yada, yada. Now, granted, fast forward the timeline for you, I've got my dad back down to one medication. He just had like life insurance analysis done with a nurse. They said his blood pressure is amazing. And I, I told my father, I said, go back to the way it was when we grew up on a farm. I grew up on a farm. So I had a quarter acre garden. Uh, I, I, I ate fresh meat, fresh vegetables. Like there was no... TV dinners. There was no, you know, manufactured crap. <laughs> uh, we weren't band-aiding everything with a pharmaceutical medication. Um, so I just want to tie all that in, right? Cause you're very holistic. So let's, yeah. let's tie it into the book here. <laughs> well, let me say this. I just thought of this. I haven't thought about this for a while in the world of Kabbalah in Jewish mysticism, they mm. say nothing happens suddenly. There is no suddenly mm. paired with a type two diabetes diagnosis generally has insulin resistance building up sometimes for a decade before, yeah. right? So diabetes doesn't just happen suddenly. Cancer doesn't just happen suddenly, right? Our lifestyle choices, stress, nutrition, movement, sleep, right? The whole thing, addiction. Mm. And then boom, you know, We've got numbers and we've got a medical system and now we have a name for a condition. Yeah, I, I, I forget who I had on recently. They were talking about the whole, listen, you can, you can keep renaming it whatever you want and it's still the same condition. Yeah. It's just everybody's looking for their own label or their own medical code to tie it to. <laughs> and I was like, I never thought about it that way. Uh, but then they, that way they can tie this drug to that and that, that new drug to that. And it's like, guys, like it's still the same condition. You still have to find the trigger points that brought that to its fruition, but so many people, I mean, I don't know, how would you answer that? Is holistic medicine, would you just automatically explain this as it is more Eastern uh, influence to help us understand there is a clear differentiation with the Eastern and Western influences? I, I would say it is more Eastern influenced. I also make the clear distinction. A lot of people interchange natural with mm. holistic. It's not really, it, it's not that at all. What holistic is, whole right the essence of who we are and for lack of cliche it is body mind and spirit because that is who we are so if we're just tending to let's say food and nutrition to the body part of it then we can't fully heal fully live you know our our life's potential we'll hit roadblocks eventually along the way every single time i just had uh, an example of that from from a client this week you know, who is just focused on food, it's a big piece, but it's not the only piece. Hmm. I like that because obviously we all might start, I, I use this term now a lot on the show. Uh, we're at a different place on, we're all at a different place on the timeline. Yeah. I mean, I, I hate to get too general, but we all have a life cycle. 
we all have a certain amount of years that we have the potential to live. And depending on the country or the area you're in, we, most of us have, for the majority, have the same influences influencing us, right? There's EMF frequencies, there's uh, sleep habits, nutrition habits, et cetera, et cetera. Now, obviously, because I've interviewed a few genetic guys, you know, so it's like, okay, you know, I've had, I've had some, uh, Dr. Anthony J, great guy. He's a geneticist for the, he's worked with the Mayo Clinic right now, but I had him do my, he took my 23andMe data, the raw data, and then did not use the reports. He does his own deep dive genetic uh, analysis on that and then finds all my markers and tells me what they really mean. It's really super cool. Uh, so I need to follow up with him and do some updates because that was probably two years ago. But the point here is that, yes, we might have a couple different biological markers. Some of us might be more prone to one thing versus another. But depending on where you're at in the timeline, you might never even thought about doing a DNA test. You might have never even gone to donate blood. I, I promote donating blood every eight weeks. So I do it all the time. So that way I get my free little health test. You know, I get my little you know, cholesterol report back in the mail, you know, all that stuff. Uh-huh. Granted, it's very surface level, you know, but it, I know when I've changed things up. And, but people haven't maybe learned that yet. So if people come across your book, right, wave goodbye to type 2 diabetes, we're not automatically saying here that, hey, guys, get this book, and I'm going to show you how to reverse it and, and win. Are we? I mean, it's just, a, a, is it a tool in the arsenal? It's a tool. You know, um, mindset runs strong throughout the book. And when I, you know, I put the book on Amazon and I got a bunch of reviews back. And as I was reading through the reviews, I learned more about what the book was about or how it affected people, you know, and there was a common thread of, you know, I felt like, you know, the author was holding my hand and leading me through the practices and it was easily digestible and it was, you know, for the lay person and I can do this. So it's a tool. If you do the work, you know, there's no reason, you know, to not prevent or reverse type two diabetes. Okay. If you don't put the effort in and you don't do the practices, then, you know, you can go ahead and, and blame the book or blame anything really. Well, I love the fact that I'm actually screen sharing for the video watchers uh, your Amazon page for the book, and, I, and uh, they give you the images of the front and back of the book before you even buy it. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can easily, as I'm showing here on video, just go read the back of the book. A lot of people like to do that just to get a quick synopsis, but, or you can go to read the reviews that she's hinting at. But the first thing you mentioned here is, has diabetes or wild blood sugar swings taken you prisoner? Discover how to break free from being sick, tired, and symptomatic. So, right off the bat, multiple times in this show, I've talked a lot about the influence of sugar. Now, obviously, everybody thinks, oh, well, yeah, it's diabetes. You know, it's, it's sugar. Well, this is bigger than that. I mean, uh, my client is, uh, have you ever heard of Vinny Tortorich? Yeah. Yeah. So, so he, I've been on his show. He's been on my show. He's my client. I help do his social media marketing. Our, uh, I, crowdfund, I help crowdfund his movie that's coming out at the end of the month, Fat, a documentary, The Truth About Healthy Fats. And, but his whole trademark what he built his career on was getting people off of sugars and grains. So to re, to remove the roller coaster ride, because yeah. he's interviewed all the experts, Dr. Brett Shear, um, the researcher, uh, Gary Taubes, uh, Nina Teicholtz. I'm sure you know these names and everybody agrees. Like guys, like you're, if you're playing the sugar train, you're going to be on the roller coaster ride. It's not just a train and you're literally jacking your liver up. Mm. You're triggering leptin and ghrelin, which are, you know, you can call them the hunger hormones. You can nickname them the weight loss you know, or weight gain hormones. Uh, so sugar has much more of a powerful influence than just diabetes. As you said earlier, diabetes is just, you've done it enough times that you've now built it up and that could be, or will be a very strong potential result. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So, you know, type two diabetes is a name of a condition. Mm-hmm. It exists in a particular environment. When we change the environment, we can change the condition. So mm-hmm. we've got you know, pre-diabetes, and we've got insulin resistance. We have metabolic syndrome, which is a precursor for type 2 diabetes. Ooh, I love when you brought that in. Nice. Yeah. High blood sugar. I love telling people it's a symptom, folks. It's a symptom. So what is underneath all of this? Excess sugar, right? Mm -hmm. Sugar, aka grain flours, Mm -hmm. right? Not just desserts, but your breads. Wait, are you, are you saying that grains get processed into the body and become a sugar? The first thing when they hit your tongue. And, and folks, uh, listeners, gluten-free or not, it doesn't matter. Many Thank gluten-free you. 
Flours are higher glycemic, higher in sugar, and more addicting even than wheat, rye, and barley. So the gluten-free thing does not matter. It is the grain flours specifically, and for many of us, even whole grains. If we have a certain level of carbohydrate intolerance, those grains are going to spike up our blood sugar, spike up insulin, lead to fatty liver disease, and on and on and on to then you got this name, type 2 diabetes, and you know, now you got to reverse it or you're going to have conditions welling up over time. Well, have you ever heard of Dr. Sylvia Tara? I have. Yeah. So the, her book is The Secret Life of Fat. I had her on over two years ago when she was launching that book. She blew my mind. I was like, yeah. I, I thought I knew about fat. And I never, she, she was the first person I ever heard her say that fat at the cellular level is an organ. She's mm. like, nobody thinks of it that way. And she's like, mm. fat is an amazing thing. It's mm. designed to protect you. And the, like fatty liver, for example, the reason why we get fatty liver is because the liver, the system has been overwhelmed. It, and it, to your point, it's not just the high sugar, it's your stress levels, cortisol levels, your lifestyle your, your systems can only take so much. They're only designed to handle so much. So if it can't filter all this bad stuff out, the fat cells kick in and say, hey, let me pull that out of the bloodstream and get that out of the way. And then it gets turned into storage. That's a very layman's explanation, but I don't know if you would agree or disagree with that little synopsis. I know, I fully agree. You know, yeah. Muscles, liver, we're storing the sugar, we're converting it into triglycerides, You know, fat in the blood, and we're seeing what epidemics of heart disease yeah. you know it's all linked and I, and heart disease is the inflammation of the of, of the of the vessel wall well that's right. that's the response from the excessive sugars and grains because our bodies were never designed to handle that load so but everybody thinks oh no it's cholesterol I'm like no the only reason why a cholesterol particle can stick to the vessel wall is if the particle size is big enough. Like most people never get a particle test. I've learned about that now. And uh, mm -hmm. I, love, I love talking to gurus like you. And yeah. then it's like, okay, well, if the vessel is not inflamed, then the cholesterol particle will probably not stick. But uh, who said this? It was a great explanation. He said, listen, it's like, it's like if you keep showing up, driving down the road, and you keep seeing, like if you're in New York City, you see a building fire. And then next week you see another building fire. But every time you get there, the fire department and police are always there. The, yeah. the modern world, everybody's just like, well, because the fire, the police are already there. They must be the ones to start the fire. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's literally what people think about. They just blame cholesterol. And then it's like, no, cholesterol is actually required at the cellular level in our body. So if we don't eat it, our bodies will make it. It's required that's for right. cellular survival. So that, but we're blaming the wrong component because to your point, we're not going back and finding the root cause. And we're unwinding this, you know, from years of faulty research uh, from the 70s, you know, fat and cholesterol. And I mean, you're absolutely right. Uh, cholesterol is there to buffer the inflammation, mm -hmm. inflammation and toxicity being the root causes of most chronic diseases. Oh, thank you for bringing toxicity in because yeah. we're, we're just talking about fat right now. And it's like, but again, it's like the fat cells aren't just storing excess sugar. They're going to store toxins. Like I, you and I were joking around before I started the show, ladies and gentlemen, I just had my first lymphatic release massage this week and I'm aching today. So I started Googling everything because I forgot to ask what to expect over the next couple of days. And even though I do regular detoxing and cleansing, they said, it doesn't matter. You're, that lymphatic release stuff can get bound up. And when you flush that out and you're high, she's like, you got to hydrate. Don't drink alcohol. You know, just really help promote the body's detoxification because it's going to take time for it all to flow out. So I'm just being bombarded by well, maybe a little bit of toxicity that was stored up. And I've been training harder for my mountain biking race. So I probably, because I learned about that too, right? I mean, do you, do you deal with athletes too? Because like don't athletes, do athletes have maybe a little bit more toxicity because we're drinking more, you know, uh, drinking more, uh, breathing more. And depending on your lifestyle, you could be consuming good or bad <laughs> but could be could yeah. be maybe less you're up in you know the mountains in boulder or somewhere and you got really clean air or maybe you're in vilcabamba ecuador getting really clean air and oh, yeah. um, you know but sure you could be more susceptible yeah but and back to your point holistically that's what i love about your book because you really emphasize we're going to take this back ladies and gentlemen why is it part of a holistic way of looking at it it's not just the nutrition right it's not just oh me going to get a lymphatic massage it's also, what is my rest and recovery? I was also traveling a lot this week. So maybe my sleep cycles were a little bit off. Uh, my circadian rhythm was a little bit off. I could probably use an extra rest day, maybe. Uh, I, I didn't yeah. really think about it. I mean, here's the thing. I coach people into optimal health. Mm 
Okay. Not just reversing numbers. We're not a number. And when, when my coaching clients go through my questionnaire and I ask them for each section, how ready and willing are you to make changes in this area, nutrition, in this area, stress reduction, in this area, you know, addiction, creativity, most people, you know, rate very high. We want to be in the joy. We want to be healthy, health, happy, healthy, and thriving, right? Do you want to move beyond lowering blood sugar, right? And most people say yes. So if you want that life, then again, you have to tend to um, and care for the whole of who you are, body, mind, spirit. So food alone doesn't get us there. It only gets us so far. Hmm. Food alone well, food alone can help deal with stressors. Certainly, if we're taking our sugars down, we're not going to be as anxious, right? We're going to be more grounded. But if we're not dealing with mindset, if we're not uh, dealing with stress reduction, sleep, addiction, then these stressors are going to come up in life. And it's like, wow, you know, uh, I had a client the other week who said, you know, I looked back and last week I just did my keto. It was like cute how she said it, but she realized that, you know, I really need to do my meditation. I need to do my affirmations because stuff came up and I, I was, I didn't do well at dealing with it because I was just focused on food last week. Okay. Interesting. So back to your point, holistically, she was focused on only one thing. Now, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that if you're trying to figure all this stuff out, right? Because some people can only focus on one thing. But back <laughs> to your point, just because you're doing ketogenic ad adaptation and learning the power of healthy fats over sugar. Okay. You can't, you can't forget about your sleep cycle. You can't forget about hydration. A lot of people getting into the ketogenic lifestyle don't realize they, they might need to supplement a, a salt supplement or an electrolytic supplement because that's a side effect that I've noticed as well, especially being an athlete. But so to your point, do you find a lot of people just need to focus on one thing initially, but you still remind them like, don't forget about these other things. Like, is that what's a part of this coaching process? You know, I meet people where they are, for sure, 100%, and okay. no pressure. However, I really work at keeping it simple. So, you know, if I give you three practices, and one of them has to do with food, and one of them has to do with mindset, and one of them has to do with moving your body, I'm going to coach you, you know, as hard as I can, as you'll allow me, to really be mindful and put some energy into all three areas. Okay. So now I know on your website, I was just looking at that, you actually have um, 12 simple lifestyle practices. Actually, it's, I think it's reverse high blood sugar and diabetes with 12 simple lifestyle practices. So when people go visit your homepage, let me screw some screen sharing again. There it is. So it's like a quick reference checklist, 100% holistic targeting. So is this what this is for? It's like, let me at least get you to wrap your head around it. <laughs> yeah. And I don't even have to work with you yet. This is, this is something free, right? This is free. And it's, you know, it can, you can call it like a preempt to the book, but it's something that you can digest immediately. And yeah, here's 12 practices. They are not all about food. Uh, a handful of them are, and they're fun. They're out of the box and they are ways that you can get started ASAP. Okay. And then obviously the next step is, Hey, now that you've wrapped your head around this, some little checklist, consider the book because eh, would you say, right, let me ask you your target audience can't help a business brain. Is your goal with this book to get through to just people living with type two body diabetes and their immediate families? Or is it bigger than that? Is it just understanding diabetes as a whole? Like what is your, cause you have to niche it some way. That's, that's this, one of the tricks of success in business, like to find a niche. So diabetes yeah. is still actually nowadays, diabetes is a very broad niche. So yeah. or niche or what we want to call it. <laughs> a lot of people. Well, I help women move into optimal health and prevent and reverse diabetes with my holistic practices lifestyle. Okay. And the only requirement is that you are fired up and ready to create permanent change, whether you're holistically minded or you've never walked into a health food store or a yoga studio. Okay. I like the fact you use fired up. Thank you. It's in my branding. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I think people do need, let, let's pause on that. People do need to get fired up about this stuff. Like, is that part of this too? It's like, do you, do you sometimes have to kind of wake people the heck up? It's like, guys, like, this is your life. Like, you can't have your sister, your brother, your mother, your father get fired up for you. Like, I think 
a, a good doctor friend of mine, uh, I had him on God a year and a half ago. Uh, their little tagline is we all need to become our own inner physician. What are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. I mean, we know we can't force people. We can't do the work for them, you know, and that's why I help people see what's in their own mind and what stories they're telling themselves about themselves, about health, about illness, about healing. But, you know, the truth is, unless we get in the driver's seat of our health, then we're going to succumb to the, you know, medical establishment, to chemical pharmaceuticals more than we'd like to, and we're not going to heal or transform. Hmm. I like this because I have another good friend of mine. She's a scientist for a pharmaceutical company. I respect what she does. And she's very knowledgeable. But she and I butt heads all the time. <laughs> because I'm like, listen, I respect your research. And I know that technically, if you trace pharmaceuticals far enough back, they're usually... If, again, follow the timeline back, it's herbs and all this different stuff that they found in mother nature and they found a way to tweak it. I mean, drug creation and, and herbal remedies go way back, but there's clearly nowadays a difference between Western and Eastern influenced, um, we'll call it air quote, medica medications. So, yeah. and I truly refer it this way. I'm interested in your feedback. I call modern pharmaceuticals the pharmaceutical Band-Aid because I want people to imagine the Band-Aid. Band-Aid's temporary. A Band-Aid doesn't, doesn't actually heal the wound. It help, you put it over the wound to help keep stuff out, but then you have to depend on your body to heal it, right? So granted, you can add little things like Neosporin or some other kind of you know, manufactured product to hopefully help aid that. But hands down, if you are a truly healthy, healthy person from the inside out, your healing will happen fast and effectively. What are your thoughts on that? I totally agree, and uh, I like the Band-Aid analogy. If we look at type 2 diabetes okay. and uh, you know, commonly prescribed metformin and then insulin, which is a disaster, Ugh. we are not deficient in metformin. We are not deficient in insulin if we are type 2. So while we're taking these quote-unquote medications, our condition is accelerating. It's accelerating at the same time. So mm. we're not only not healing it, right, by not tending to um, our practices and our lifestyle, but the condition is accelerating. If you look at most people who have, um, you know, amputations mm -hmm. and they're, you know, losing their eyesight and they have uh, wounds that aren't healing, you know, from diabetes, they're on the medications. Yeah. They're taking insulin right so I can, I can tell you my father was just in the hospital for a foot injury mm -hmm. and i know being a type 2 diabetic he's at a higher risk and yeah. he had ignored a callus or something and it got infected on the bottom of his pad of his of his pinky uh, toe and it ended up triggering uh cellulitis which is like a bacterial buildup in your leg his leg blew up it was red it was swollen and you could purely infection triggered. And I'm like, oh my God. But he's on diabetic medication, right? So as soon as they put a diabetic into the hospital, they put him on another diabetic regimen above and beyond his normal regimen because they, they have to like cross their T's and dot their I's and that's what the protocol says. And I'm like, does he even need it though? Uh, and then because, and I was just in the hospital in January because I accidentally collapsed the lung. Uh, that's a whole different story. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm a healthy as a horse and they made me take, I found it later, I could have declined it. They, because you're laying in a bed, their now go-to is everybody gets a shot in your fat uh, for anticoagulant or a clotting agent to prevent yeah. you from eating blood clots while laying in a bed for multiple days. Because I was in for eight days. He was in for about a week, as well, at least a week as well. And I'm like, but if I have a low risk of clotting because of my healthy lifestyle, why do I have to get the shot? They don't care. It's a checklist. Boom. And yeah, I'm like, liability. What are, the, what are the side effects of that? Like, I... <laughs> Like I, my, the, the phlebotomist, like the phlebotomist yeah. at, the, at, the, at the blood donation centers love me. My veins pop out of my arms. They said they could be half blind and still hit me. <laughs> I mean, they love me. They, by the way, you, yeah. want, you want to get a phlebotomist excited people. Just walk in with really good veins and vessels. Oh, my God. They love you. So uh, there could be a new dating tip. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it is important, you know, for the listeners to know, and, and I'm sure, you know, you've, you've said this in many different ways, but 
if if we're not tending to the source right from from a functional uh, perspective through a functional lens and we're only taking these chemical pharmaceuticals our conditions are worsening they're mm -hmm. still accelerating as we're taking these medications the medications depress some symptoms while creating others right those mm -hmm. side effects those effects and not only the side effects but that the condition is worsening over time well the other thing is i, I can't stand is actually because you brought it up uh, and we're coming towards the end of the show, but I have to share this because metformin is brought up all the time. Yeah. And I love the fact that you actually clarified it's still considered a drug, right? Because you actually have to get a prescription to have it. But that oh, yeah. is like the go-to now, right? And yeah, yeah, metformin is like right the go-to. I don't have to bring up a site. This is pulled out of the diabetes.co.uk. So it's not from our US one. I don't really like promoting the ADA. They're kind of idiots. Um, and the AHA, <laughs> I guess a whole different podcast. Uh, but so it's a type of medicine known as big one eyed. I think that's how you say it. But this works to lower the amount of sugar in the blood of people with diabetes. It does this by lowering the amount of sugar produced in the liver and also increasing the sensitivity of muscle cells to insulin. So you're increasing sensitivity, natural, sen well, unnatural sensitivity in a muscle cell to insulin. Like, okay, that's supposed to, you're not, I don't mention anything about a cure. I don't see anything about curing it, fixing it. I just no. see you're changing and this is things. guess what you get to do this for the rest of your life if that's right. the path that you want to go down and lots of gi di uh, digestive issues from metformin that's the biggest complaint no fun no fun yeah. at all right, right here this was posted back in 2002 metformin can cause a side effect called lactic acidosis and acidosis is is the bad like because I, yeah. I, I do keto you know, people are like oh you know ketosis everybody gets confused yeah. with ketosis and ketoacidosis so anyway, it's a buildup of lactic acid in the blood that is fatal in half of all cases. I'm like, okay, you might want to consider that. Like, but are they telling people all this stuff? I don't know. Right. Also, are, are they saying that, you know, at a certain point, uh, you're going to build up a tolerance. It's likely you'll need more. And then it's likely you'll need more. And then at a certain point, we, you may need to go on insulin, you know. Because the body's is, adapting. And, Disaster. Yeah. yeah. So, wow, what a fun cycle when you could actually get in the driver's seat of your health, tend to your lifestyle, tend to your practices, being willing, being open to shift things up, yep. keep it simple, get support, and actually get healthy and transform. Well, I could go to a, my, my parents are old school. I'll go out. They live in central Pennsylvania. They're surrounded by the Amish and Mennonite, a lot of farming country. So, I'll go out to spend time with them, and they love going to diners. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I order tons of eggs and bacon. And my dad orders, uh, it's nicknamed the SOS, which is like cream chip beef over like bread. And I'm like, yeah. he's like, well, I, I have insulin for that. I'm like, that's not the answer. Mm -hmm. Like, stop eating the bread. Stop eating white potatoes. White potatoes are sugar bomb. I'm like, yeah. if you stop eating that, we can keep reducing the insulin. My goal is to get him off of all pharmaceuticals, including insulin. And a lot of people think that type 2 diabetes, once you've got it, because you, you hinted earlier in the show, once you've had it, it might have had 10 years of buildup to finally trigger it. So it's going to take many years to reverse that. But that doesn't mean you give up. And is, is that what you want people to get out of your book too? It's like, don't give up. Like, keep asking don't, questions. <laughs> no. I mean, in life in general, you have to persevere. Do not give up, right, mm. uh, on any of your dreams, on any of your desires, and reversing type 2 diabetes really shouldn't take years and years and years if you are willing to shift your lifestyle practices, right? Um, and really, it doesn't matter how long it takes. If you're moving in the right direction, you know, one of my clients said this week, you know what, like, I didn't lose as much weight as I wanted to, but I feel so much better, right? Okay. How do you Energy. feel? Yeah. How do you feel? So, and because and I feel a lot of people, they're not listening to the bodies. They're yeah. not feeling. And they just, and that's the other problem with pharmaceuticals too, is it's numbing you. Like you're not able to react or observe what's normally should be happening in your body. That's what people like, when I start making all my health transformations, like, wait a minute, you mean to tell me like now if I try and go off all this and I go back, I'm going to get a headache? Because like, seriously, if I go to see my parents on Thanksgiving, if I eat my mom's apple pie, I will get a headache later that night. I'm like, yeah. why would you want to live that way? I'm like, what? that my body is telling me exactly what's wrong. I'm that clear. Like, yeah, so I'll, I'll deal with a headache later, but I'm not eating apple pie every week. Right. Like a year. 
Like, right. well, why would you want to leave so deprived, live so deprived? I'm like, I'm not deprived. I have high energy. I'm a peak level athlete. And I could do pretty much keep challenging myself to do whatever I want. That's freedom to me. Yeah. And, so. you know, that kind of liberation is desirable by many of us. And there's other people that they love their bread and they'll stick with that. Oh, trust me. My own wife says it. She's like, you're not going to get me to quit bread. <laughs> I'm like, baby, I'm not here to get you to do anything. It is your choice. It is your lifestyle choice. And she's, she's definitely cut way back since she's known me. So well, make her some almond flour bread. You know, that's all we need to we've do. We've done an almond flour pizza. Uh, okay. And I was like, why go through all this labor? We never eat pizza anyway. <laughs> like, see, I was yeah. like, like, people feel like you have to make an almond flour pizza. But like, I never had pizza really anyway. So I'm not yeah. missing anything. It's only when I'm out socially and people are like, oh, come on, man, join us for a pie. I'm like, dude, I'm not missing anything because I never get pizza anyway. So yeah. I feel fine. Give me yeah. a slab of meat. <laughs> well, there certainly are enough alternatives out there. Um, yes. You know, whether you make it uh, more and more in the store now, just uh, everybody, please remember, don't, don't switch up. Uh, high quality ingredients and in food for low carbohydrates, right? Don't use keto yes. like a diet. Focus on your health. Thank you. Uh, there's been, unfortunately, I knew this was coming, but I'm already seeing it. The paleo terminology already started getting bastardized. And now the keto thing is too. People are, because I'm a marketing guy, I know what the companies are doing. And yeah. they're like, I'm like, oh, look, there's keto desserts. I'm like, there's no such thing as a dessert <laughs> in a healthy lifestyle. And if you do have it, it's supposed to be a rare reward. You're not supposed to have dessert every week. Like, it's supposed to be a psychological thing. And honestly, I reward myself with the beautiful uh, fresh vegetables and fresh meats or whatever of your choice is. But yes, you have to watch out for that now because you got to read the fine print. And they're also, one thing I do like, because you, you know who Vinny is, he gives away a free PDF on his site like you do, but it has like every possible version of what sugar means. Mm -hmm. Like every, nice. all the new sugar alcohols, all these little fine prints that they're sneaking in. Because mm -hmm. people, people think that, oh, because it's a stevia style product or an alcohol that it's different. And yeah. we've had it proven like, nope, once that hits your liver, your liver doesn't know the difference. Mm -hmm. It's going to metabolize the same way. It still sees sugar, sugar, sugar. It doesn't matter if it came from the white cocaine sugar or the, or the, the, the plants or the alcohols or, or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, we have to be mindful and the sugar alcohols, I say, eat, you know, in, in moderate uh, amounts. Personally, they mess with my gut a bit. If That's I That's the eat, other thing. That's a whole different podcast. Gut you know, yeah. yeah. I mean, Thank you for I bringing do a, a little bit of, you know, erythritol or inulin and, you know, certainly, you know, monk fruit and stevia are nice, but I can't, you can't overdo it. I mean, it just... Well, that's one thing I've also realized is that you get so clean and your body starts talking yeah. to you and then yeah. you graduate to now you're like, like I'm at now at the level where I geek out about gut health because now I know that yeah. your gut health is bacterially tied to your brain health. So, and if you dig deep enough and depending on the expert you talk to, holistically, it actually supposedly all roots down to your gut. There's so much tied to the gut, nutrition, sleep, cortisol, everything. Like the gut yeah. is manifesting outward throughout the whole body. And I've interviewed a few people on that, but I can't wait to keep geeking out more about that because there's so much tied to that. And there's a lot of holistic people talking about gut health. A lot, you know, the microbiome, the microbiome and the microbiome. And, you know, it, it's like my gut, my belly tells me what's going on, you know. Yeah, if you get if a stomach ache, that's a sign. I feel good. Yeah. If, if it's a little off, something's not working. And then the connection to that and our mood. Mm -hmm. you know, depression and anxiety. I mean, that seems clear too. The more clean we get, the more we feel it. Well, and I also love the fact that you can get a stomach ache if you're stressed. Well, yeah, because they're tied together. They're talking. Right. Like, exactly. this is good. Pay attention to this. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Well, listen, I've had a blast today. I knew, I knew you and I would geek out. I hope yeah, you know. it's been wonderful. I appreciate yeah. the spontaneity and not knowing what we were going into. And When you know your craft, Earthy. I'm right. never worried about it. Because like right. we're gonna we're gonna go down a couple different paths, and I want to yeah. give people a diversity, and yeah, we're not gonna follow a standard Q and A format. And, and you crushed it, so so thank you for hanging out. Thank well, listen, you. I asked my guest co-host to help close out the show. Yeah. So everything behind your mission, your book, uh, you shared so much good tips and knowledge today. Is there any kind of like all encompassing message that you're trying to like get out to the world, or you want to leave behind for the audience today that kind of sums it all up? You know, what I'll say is that our thoughts, our beliefs invoke our actions. 
and our actions are what create results. So look at the results you have, look at the results you don't have, and then backtrack to your actions and what thoughts and what beliefs created those actions or left you stagnant. This is where all work, all practices begin. It's right here. And it's not an intellectual concept. It's a daily practice. We can think of it in terms of affirmations. Ooh, I like affirmations, man. You can drop some bombs today. Love that. Thank you. Uh, well, let's hang tight. I want to give you a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, for the, for the video love, I'm going to share one last time. Again, right on our website is her name, uh, drnickysteinberger.com. We'll have this linked all in the show notes and in the blog notes on the website. Uh, it's on Amazon. I'll have this. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you go to livethefuel.com, if you want to support the show, click through the Amazon banners on my show because that's a way I've never monetized this show, but that's a way to help support us because I spent a lot of money running the show and I've never brought an ad on because I can't stand it. So if you click through the Amazon banner, I get a tiny little taste of it. But if you click through that banners, those are linked to my influencer page on Amazon. And for those who regularly follow the show, I have an entire book reference page. So when you click there, it'll show you gear or books. Well, right there, all the books, all the authors I've ever had on the show, I have all their books in there. So you can also just go right to Amazon and click there and find her book as well. So again, as I'm screen sharing now, wave goodbye to type two diabetes, Dr. Nikki Steinberger. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to fuel your health, your business, and your lifestyle. We definitely hit on a lot of that today. Never give up, never surrender, and don't be afraid to ask. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you two can live the fuel. We'll talk to you guys again soon.